pastor here at St. Paul's. It is a joy to be with you today. It is a joy to be celebrating. And it's a joy because it is Joy Sunday as we continue our Advent journey. And speaking of joys, by the way, I can think of no better joy than Tabitha Joanne, who was born on Tuesday. So Pastor Jessica is doing well. Uh, Tabitha is doing well. Um, she said she wasn't sure she'd slept uh, as of yesterday since Tuesday. So um, anyway, they, they just are uh, over the moon as they uh, continue to, to be just totally in love. Friends, uh, I'm so glad that you are here to worship. As we get started, uh, several announcements for you. First of all, um, you have uh, attendance uh, pu pet cards things on your... <laughs> books, that was the word I wanted, uh, on the end of your row. If you wouldn't mind filling one of those out, notice in there there's also an opportunity for you to fill out a prayer card. Uh, if there is a way, uh, perhaps a joy, a baby in your life, um, or, or a concern that you would like to share with us, I would encourage you to fill one of those out. You can drop it in the offering plate when that comes by a little bit later in the service. Uh, also, in the, the spirit of, of sharing uh, your attendance and information, I want to remind you to get your picture taken at our photo booth. Uh, we're asking everybody to do that, um, and three cool things that happen with that. Number one, uh, we'll print out a, a picture and put it in an ornament that we'll add to our Christmas trees, our family Christmas trees right outside the, the door. Um, number two, you'll get to take that home with you at the end of the season. And number three, we'll ask you to fill out some information so that we can keep your contact info up to date. Um, and so all of that helps us stay in communication with you, uh, not only in this season, but also throughout the year. So make sure to do that uh, today if you have not yet done that. Um, this Thursday at 6 p.m., we will have a charge conference uh, downstairs in the Bridge Classroom. This is the annual meeting where we discuss all the business and budget and things of that nature. Uh, all members are welcome to come. If you have any questions, let me know about that. Um, and then also wanted to remind you that uh, as we come to the end of the year, if you have any year-end contributions because of the, the way the holiday falls, if you're giving those online, it'll have to be by the Wednesday of the last after Christmas. So um, just be aware of that. And um, speaking of that, I want to invite our lay leader, uh, Judy Christensen, to come up to share an announcement from SPR. Good morning. I'm sure I s share this sentiment with all of you. We are very, very blessed to have wonderful staff here. And if you saw the uh, newsletter and saw the list there, you may not have realized that there was 15 people on staff here because you don't see all of them every Sunday morning up here in the front of the church. You see the pastors and the music people and the wonderful people back there in the sound booth. But there's a secretary and a treasurer and a janitor and on and on. And all of these people behind the scenes are just as important. We want to show our appreciation again this year to the staff by having a love offering for them. We have envelopes that you may have seen on the table out there where the sign, where that you signed in and picked up a name tag. If you would like to take one of those envelopes and put some cash in it or put a check in it or just write a check and put a staff appreciation love offering in the memo, we would really like to have you join us in appreciating the staff this year. We're kind of have a cutoff of uh, December 31st, which is on a Sunday, makes it easy uh, for you if you would like to contribute to this. And thank you so much for honoring all of our wonderful staff here. Thanks, Judy. A couple other things for you to be aware of coming up in the next couple of weeks. Next Sunday afternoon, 1 to 3 p.m., uh, there's an opportunity to serve at Shawnee Community Services for their Christmas party. Uh, there's information on that in the bulletin. And then on December 19th at noon, there will be a webinar. Uh, as you know, it's been a priority for this church uh, to advocate for Medicaid expansion. And there is uh, an event being hosted online. You can log in from anywhere uh, to talk about how faith communities can mobilize and uh, participate in advocacy in the upcoming legislative session. So that's the 19th. Hope you'll consider joining for that. Um, looking ahead to holiday services, uh, three to lift up for you on, uh, also on the 19th, um, we will have a Blue Christmas service. Uh, that is a, a service that it really is intended for folks who may be wrestling with grief or, or maybe feeling a little less holly and jolly in the holiday season. Of course, all are invited 
It's a different way of looking at the Christmas story and understanding what the hope and healing that Jesus offers uh, looks like for those of us uh, who are wrestling with grief or or loss or or, uh, any sort of challenge in this season. And then on Christmas Eve, we'll have four services, one service in the morning at 10 a.m., that will look a little bit more like a Sunday morning service, and then three services in the evening with, uh, with candle lighting and silent night and all of that at, at 4, 7, and 11. So I hope that you'll plan to join us uh, for at least one of those services. And if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Friends, today we turn our attention to joy, uh, to the promise that we can receive that from God in all circumstances and in all situations. And so as you're able, I would invite you to stand so that we can sing together. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, I've been told uh, out over there in Annex land, do we have any words, Opal? Yes, no? Yes, no. So if you want to be able to, like, see the words and stuff, as long as you can see the screen, you're good to go. But if not, feel free to move around the, the space and play in the space. All right, Charlie, we got any sound going from here? We run into some sound issue? I'm playing. We did. All right. I'm going to jump on over uh, to the other piano, I guess, then. <laughs> All right. Let's sing together. I'm going to ask Sydney and uh, Olivia help me out with the, the singing on this, then. We're going to sing that song we started last week, Jesus, What a Wonderful Child. Advent in this season, a very familiar story to all of us, 
um, we talk about these two women in, in, in the word, Mary and Elizabeth, and their interactions, and I'm reminded of Luke's gospel this morning. Mary answers, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's great greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Mary was filled, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. And as we remember Elizabeth's joy this morning, as she was promised this Messiah, and just the joy that filled her up in that moment, my prayer would be that we would be filled with that same joy this morning. So as we continue in worship this morning, let us join together in singing about this beautiful name of Jesus. Let's sing, You Are the Word at the Beginning. You were the Word at the Beginning, one with God. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you.
Amen. Today we get to light the third candle of joy, and to help us do that, um, Mary Kieser and Adam Roser and Adrian and Elliot are going to help us out this morning. Thank you all. We continue our Advent journey today as we make room for joy. We know we light our third candle, our pink candle, to help us make our way. We know that we need God's help to choose joy this year as much as ever. The prophet Isaiah says in chapter 12, And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. As we move closer to the coming of Jesus, we celebrate that his presence in the world gives shape to the empowering, connecting, and healing gift of joy. So far, we have lit the candles of peace. And of hope. And today, we light the candle of joy. Let us be reminded today of God's joy. Come to us in the gift of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we do thank you this day for the gift of joy, that your joy keeps springing up in surprising ways and that we uh, can see that and, and affirm that as we take joy um, in one another just as, as you take joy in us. God, uh, would we make room, help us to make room uh, for your joy um, in the midst of so many things that um, can... can uh, overwhelm and, and help us be anxious and all these things, we hand them to you and uh, we ask that you would help us to um, clear aside and, and take care of God, holding your hand, whatever needs to happen so that um, we'd be open to receiving all your joy as we prepare for the coming of your son, Jesus, our Lord. And we pray in his name. Amen. Uh, during uh, this season, we were talking specifically about uh, the Christmas Eve offering that we get to do. Uh, which I'm really excited that it's tradition here that we're going to give uh, 100% of our Christmas Eve offering to work beyond uh, the walls of our church. Um, Pastor Kyle talked a little bit last week about the um, uh, global work of the United Methodist Church and how we get to participate in that. We'll be giving to what we call mission shares and the work of the, the United Methodist Church, uh, both locally and all around the world. And the other piece of what we're giving our Christmas uh, Eve offering to is local organizations working uh, on um, issues of, of food insecurity and, and helping those who are food insecure in our midst. Um, something like one in 12 uh, people in Johnson County uh, is food insecure. Um, poverty is, is, is close by and sometimes closer than, than I think we, we recognize. Um, we, uh, uh, I read today that uh, if poverty were a city in Johnson County, it would be the sixth biggest city. It's almost as big as, as the city of Lenexa. Um, so we as a church have done a lot, um, partnering with a number of organizations um, to give and, and help folks who are hungry, um, both here and in Wyandotte and in KCK. Um, just a few of the things, hopefully you know, uh, each first Sunday of the month we, we do the, the food drive and that goes to um, Johnson County Multi-Service Center and to the hub. We have people working at the hub every week um, with a, a, a special grocery store that helps lots of families uh, in the Argentine neighborhood. Um, Cross Lines uh, is a food kitchen where folks who are um, experiencing homelessness or, or you know, really close to, to the, that um, are, are getting a uh, hot meal served that we provide uh, once a month for, it's usually 150, I think almost 200 people this past week. Um, we've helped Arrowhead Middle School because it's hard to learn when you're hungry. Uh, we're working on issues of things like uh, Medicaid expansion because it's hard when you have to choose between rent and childcare and uh, food. And, um, and and we want to we want to be the, the we I think are being fed as we are working to feed others. 
Uh, and so we get to be a part of that with our Christmas Eve offering this year. And I just want to encourage you to be uh, generous as, as we look to give um, in that time. And, and with that, um, as we prepare for that Christmas Eve offering, we'll also take our offering today, uh, which helps us to continue just the work of, of the church that, that makes all that other kinds of giving possible. And so uh, I invite you to be generous as our, our um, uh, ushers come around uh, with, with the plates. Uh, also, just a reminder that this is a place you could put a prayer request uh, in the plate too, um, is the one way that you could turn in, turn in that prayer request. Uh, the other thing that's happening at this time is, um, uh, again, I thank you for all who helped care for our, our kids and youth and, and with Pastor Jessica um, home with, with baby Tabitha, um, the, the work goes on and we all get to work at um, caring for and raising up our kids. And so Gary's back there. Any, anybody up to age, uh, up to sixth grade is welcome to go at this time downstairs for a little time that's uh, specific to you. Um, and, uh, and we'll see you back in a little bit. I think that's what I got. That's our doxology. Oh, bless the gifts our hands have brought, and bless the work our hearts have planned. Ours is the faith, the will, the thought, the rest of God is in your hand. Would you pray with me? Good and holy God, we give you thanks for the gifts that you have given to us and for the season in which we are invited to think about what it means to be generous and to return a part of what we have received from you uh, back to your work. Bless those who have given, bless those who will receive. Let the gifts shared today be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Uh, friends, before you sit down, whoop, <laughs> Pastor Eric. Would you take a moment to greet those who are worshiping with you today? like to follow along in our scripture, we'll start in Luke 1, 39. Uh, some of these words we heard a few minutes ago from Liv, but I would invite you to hear them once again. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to the Judean town in, a, in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah 
and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is it that this has happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in the remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. May God a blessing to our reading and understanding of these words. So I wonder if you have experienced something lately that you might describe as good or right or beautiful or sacred or surprising. What comes to mind? And of that thing that you experience, I wonder if you've taken a moment to share it with somebody else. I wonder if you've noticed something good or right or beautiful or sacred or surprising in another person lately. And if so, I wonder if you've shared it with them. My hunch is that, that some of you are like me and that when you hear those questions, well, it's a little bit hard to think of when you've done that recently. Or perhaps if you do uh, are able to think of, of when you've done that recently, my guess is that you can also think of many more opportunities that you had to do that very thing, but you didn't. Either you chose not to or you didn't think of it in the moment or it didn't seem that important. In other words, even if you have shared something good or right or beautiful or lovely or kind with somebody else, my hunch is that there are three or four times where you didn't do that. We didn't take the time uh, to share those things. Where you didn't tell the, the worker at the restaurant something that you were grateful for, something that you noticed about them as they interacted with you briefly, that there was uh, something that you could have said to your partner that you really appreciated about them, something small that they did perhaps, but you didn't, or, or that you didn't tell a coworker about something beautiful you saw on the way to the office that day. I think there's lots of those missed opportunities in our life, and I was thinking this week, why do we do that? Why do we share these things with such irregularity? And I don't think it's because we're bad people. I don't think it's, be I think it's uh, largely because we're busy. I think it's partially because we're disconnected and we're afraid of, of what connection might cost us. We're anxious about how somebody might receive what it is that we share. Perhaps we're too focused on getting to the next thing or to the end game or, or the way things are supposed to go, at least as we've conceived them in our minds. That sometimes all of these things add up and we don't have the capacity to sprinkle in that surprising joy. Or to put it in terms more appropriate for our Advent journey together this year, that, that sometimes we just don't have room for that kind of joy. I wonder if you have a sense of the things that are keeping you uh, from joy in your life. What are the things that need to move around to make space for that? Might it be that, that some of those things that we've already said are, are, are the things, the barriers that we need to overcome, our frenetic pace, our, our sense of disconnection, the, the comparisons we sometimes make to other people, the uncertainty about how somebody will respond, or, or our preset expectations, might those be the things that keep us from joy? This text that we read this morning is... It's the traditional text that we read on this, on this Joy Sunday of Advent. And actually, the, the Joy Sunday, it goes back uh, before there was a four-Sunday Advent celebration in the church. You see, back in the day in the northern hemisphere, as the days got shorter and the nights got longer and the weather got colder, uh, people apparently had seasonal affect disorder then, too. And so they, they carved this, this day out of uh, the winter to celebrate joy and to remind themselves of that. And so people have been lighting a single candle on a single Sunday in the midst of this season for a very long time. And these other three have just sort of 
been added to the mix of it. And it's been often uh, common in the midst of those celebrations of joy that we would read Mary's Magnificat, the words that she speaks in response to Elizabeth uh, that talks about these beautiful things that God is doing, this, this great reversal that's happening, uh, that speaks about the lowly being lifted up and the proud sent away, that says those who are hungry will have their fill, that says that God is doing this big and cosmic thing, except it's interesting, the translation, when we, when we read it, it's all written as if God is doing this right now. And sometimes that strikes us as odd because Mary is talking about this, but it seems that this is what God will do. But, but it's actually neither of those. In the original text, Mary says that God has already done these things. So great is the confidence and faith that she has in what God is doing through the child that she is carrying, that she is able to speak it as if it has already been done, that God has done this great and beautiful work. She has this tremendous amount of conviction around that, and, and she, she, she names that God has lifted her, a lowly servant, uh, somebody with, with no status, into something well, into something that she was not before. And usually that's what we talk about on this Joy Sunday. There's a lot that we can pull from that. There's wonderful things in this, this picture that Mary paints. And it's all grand and majestic and awe-inspiring. Especially coming from the mouth of one who is herself a child. And a poor one at that. But this year, it isn't the cosmic turnaround that God is doing that's been drawing my attention. In fact, I had a perfectly good sermon written on that in the middle of the week, and this is not it. Because I just kept coming back to a much simpler part of the story. The part of the story where two pregnant women, separated by 80 miles and perhaps almost as many years, come together to share with one another. They connect and I was struck by the idea of baby kicks and bulging bellies and quiet tears and long overdue hugs. No fireworks, no pomp and circumstance, no angel in this story. Just two women gathered in the midst of their worlds changing drastically for a few moments of genuine connection. And I kept getting drawn to this as we think about joy because that idea of genuine connection, isn't that the seedbed out of which joy most often grows? And my guess is that there are many of us who this Christmas, if we were being honest, what we would really like more than anything is more of that, more connection uh, to the ones that we love. Uh, more connection uh, to those that we worship with, more connection to our friends or our coworkers or our community. Many of us, that's what we want more of this Christmas if we're being really honest. And here we have this moment between these two women that lacks any sort of pretense, just sharing in their questions and their delight and multiplying their joy. The author Michael Bennett asks us to notice the the cycle that follows as these two women interact, that there is recognition followed by a response. And so Mary, who is possibly feeling the effects early of pregnancy and is wearied by her long journey, uh, no doubt feels new energy that comes when we arrive in a place. She's made the journey, and she's made it to Elizabeth's house, and she knocks on the door, announces her arrival, and enters the house. And then you can imagine Elizabeth, for her part, who's probably feeling uh, the six months of pregnancy at an age when, when a woman isn't supposed to be pregnant, uh, but also feels the joy of this anticipation and the, the fulfillment of something that she's always dreamed about. You can imagine that she's doing something, getting ready for this baby, and she hears the voice of her cousin. And when she does, from deep within, a baby kicks. And filled with the Holy Spirit, the text said that she proclaims loudly this blessing, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your body. And I just think that that is beautiful and genuine and simple and holy. But notice that cycle. Elizabeth recognizes something and then with the help of the Holy Spirit and the baby kicking within her, she offers a blessing. 
That's her response. And what a gift that is. And if you notice, it continues. Mary, upon receiving this affirmation, uh, upon recognizing that indeed this thing that she imagined, that she heard, that she believed must be true, she responds as well with a blessing. We call it the Magnifica. But could it be today that this text might be inviting us to do the same thing? Simple as this, to notice and to share to be aware and to say something, to recognize what we so often look past and then to respond to it and perhaps even to respond with a blessing. Could it be for us today that that might be a step we can make towards making room for joy? That it might look like making space for genuine connection. And it doesn't have to be a long connection. It doesn't have to be a deep connection. My guess is that there are some people in your life who would, who would like a little bit more of that, but it could also be a passing connection that's genuine and authentic, where we actually notice the person in front of us, or, or perhaps even notice somebody who's not in front of us. Maybe you want to take time to write a note to somebody who's far away, who you haven't connected with a while in a while, and say, you know, I was thinking about you. Maybe uh, you want to tell somebody that you appreciate what they've done. Maybe you've seen somebody going through a struggle and difficulty, and you want to say, I see that this has been challenging for you, but I also see the grace with which you've been handling this challenge. If we could do that, friends, I think we too might experience just small, simple moments of connection and of joy, but it would require us to look up and to look around and to slow down a little bit. And those are things that I think not only foster the possibility of genuine connection, but I think in our lives, in small ways and large, they create the possibility for joy. And so I want to unpack each one of them in turn. Let's start with slowing down. We know what it's like, or maybe I should just speak for myself. I know what it's like to compress the maximum amount of things into the smallest time frame possible. Is it Christmas season for anybody else? Okay. I'm as guilty as the next person of parading Gracie around from one corner of an event to another to get the perfect picture and missing all of the in-between things that happened yesterday. We were at a living nativity, and I got really mad at a camel. I actually got mad at a camel because it would not stay in the right spot for the perfect picture. (laughs) And when you get mad at a camel, you may be, in fact, in too much of a hurry. In the holiday season, we do this as we move from one event to another, and we often miss the joy of the events or the going in between because we feel like we have to go from one to the next. We move at a frenetic pace, and oftentimes that squeezes the joy out of things. So Gracie has this book. Um, It's Dr. Seuss's 100 First Words, and, and each page is a different category. And on the category of colors, there is an orange flower. Now, I say all of that to say that the point is not the flower, the point is that it's orange. But Gracie wants to smell the orange flower every time. It's a book. It doesn't have any smell. And it's orange. It's not even that it's a flower. It's just orange. That's all it says. It doesn't even say flower. And when we read it close to bedtime, and I'm ready to be done with daddy duty and ready for her to go to bed, I want to skip the next page. And every time she stops me and goes... (laughs) And if I'm in a bad mood, I get frustrated. And I miss the joy of it. Michael Bennett says that uh, many people find themselves uh, on this day battered by the gauntlet that we politely call the holidays. In this season, the stress of balancing work and home life extends beyond our normally dangerous levels in our modern way of being. And we know that this rushing about in the holidays or in any time prevent us from experiencing joy. We tell ourselves that it'll slow down when, in the new year, it'll slow down when something else changes, but, but we know that that when never comes unless we make an intentional change, and so perhaps for you, the when could be now. Busyness is one thing that keeps us from joy. So too is comparison. Comparison is the, the thief of joy. And I think the remedy is for us to look up, and here's what I mean. Very often, we can look down at the things that we have as if uh, they're not enough. We can look down at who we are or what we have and and think that our haves or our have-nots are the things that will dictate our joy. I was at the Spark Christmas party this week, and I was having a conversation with one of our members who talked about 
traveling to developing parts of the world and the ways that people in those places can find so much joy in the simplest of things. And how humbling that is for us who have a, a Johnson County mindset who can too often buy into the narrative that, that if we have more stuff, we'll somehow have our spirits lifted and experience joy. We know it's not true. As they were telling me about this, I was thinking about a little boy in Haiti playing with a train that had a piece of string uh, tied around it, but it was made out of uh, two or three um, toilet paper rolls, the, the cardboard from it. And I saw him day after day after day playing with this, just as happy and content as could be. But sometimes comparison uh, makes us look down on the things that we have as if they're not enough, and that's the barrier, the obstacle to joy. Sometimes comparison tells us that we can't be happy until we have X, Y, Z. Comparison tells us that we shouldn't be happy until we prove something or provide something or create something that lives up to our own insurmountable expectations or those that we see flashed on social media. Comparison tells us that we will be happy if, when, and then. Comparison tells us that who we are and what we have is wrong or flawed or faulty or without value. It causes us to look down on the good and beautiful things that we have and the way that we are and diminish its worth. It tells us that, that we aren't enough because we aren't like somebody else. And instead of beholding the beauty of the things that we have, the relationships that we have, the gifts and skills and who we are, we often diminish them. By the way, it also drives a wedge in our connection with other people. If we're comparing ourselves to, to somebody else, I don't have cool clothes like that. I know you don't have a pink jacket. Uh, I don't have jokes that good. I don't look as good as they do. I don't make the money, have the friends, the experiences that they do. That's rarely good ground for connecting with somebody else. It triggers our insecurities, which is rarely the gateway to authentic, healthy connection. It rarely leads us to joy. So don't let comparison rob you of your joy. One last thing that I think. Sometimes, um, sometimes we, we just don't look very much around our present reality. We don't notice. And I think that happens uh, for two things, two, in two different ways. Number one, if you remember last week, we said that the prophet Isaiah saw a word. We said that there is a seeing beyond seeing, a hearing beyond hearing. We, we said that there is often more going on than, than immediately meets our eye or our immediate perception is, and that sometimes we don't take the time to look beyond the, 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 the way that things appear, and in so doing, we miss a beautiful layer of reality all around us. We often don't notice it because we, we aren't looking around that much. We've got our to-do list. We're determining our response before we received or heard the thing that we're supposed to be responding to. Many of us, if we are paying attention to what's around us, are content with snap judgments or quick uh, assessments and shallow calculations, and we allow those to dictate our experience. Claudine Ullman is a, a South African improv coach. And one of the beautiful things about participating in improv comedy is that you have to be fully present to what is coming towards you because it's always unpredictable. It's always out of the norm. And so you have to pay attention. And one of the things that she says is that most of the time we're so worried about how we'll respond to something or how we think that things should be that we miss out on what actually is. And friends, that's convicting. And so maybe it's because of her voice echoing in my head this week. Maybe it's because we're in a season that's about birth, or maybe it's because of that adorable picture of Tabitha. But, but something that Pastor Jessica said about a week ago has just been sticking with me. She was talking about the ways that, that sometimes we have preset expectations and how sometimes we get so fixated on the end game, so fixated on the destination that we fail to enjoy the process or the journey. She said it was on her mind because her doctor had said ahead of, uh, of going into labor that sometimes people make labor plans and get distraught when things don't go as they planned and, and things derail. And listen, friends, I, I was uh, uh, loosely, peripherally a part of one labor plan, so I, I have no wisdom on any of that. But I can tell you that in my life, I've made plans or got fixated on destinations and missed the joy in the midst of it. 
miss being present to others and myself in the midst of it. And I think that can happen to us. So when I say look around, what I mean is don't get so fixated on the end game that all we're looking at is that. And, and, and don't even just take things at face value, but, but perhaps try to understand the deeper and richer stories that are unfolding around us. And instead of looking in and, and anticipating our response, perhaps we can look to that which is around us. And perhaps all of that would open us up to the possibility of experiencing more joy as we look around. And so, friends, there's probably a list of a hundred things that keep us from joy, and maybe some of them have a very particular form or shape for you. But for me, I'm thinking about the way that busyness squeezes the joy out of life. And for me, I'm thinking about the way that sometimes getting fixated on the end game keeps us from the joy of life. And I'm thinking about the ways that comparison can prevent us from connection in that seedbed for, jo for, for joy. And so if you are one of the people feeling battered by this gauntlet that we politely call the holidays, and if you're one who feels disconnected, and if you're one who has experienced joy to be elusive in this season, today you can read the Magnifica, but I offer you this simple story this beautiful connection of two women, each on their own journeys, sharing something meaningful in an out-of-the-way town, in an out-of-the-way house. This simple connection, two women in the throes of life. I offer you this pattern of recognition and response and an invitation for you to notice and to share, to see and to bless, to slow down, to look up, to look around and see if you too might make a bit more room for joy this year. Amen. And indeed, what a joy it is to get to gather around this table together, this table of God's grace, uh, where we go each week and we are fed uh, and we're empowered to go and, and, and feed others. Um, joy is contagious. And I, I, it's helpful to me at this season to remember that it wasn't like somehow reluctantly that, that God sent Jesus um, because I guess it had to be done. I think it's in God's joy, because of God's delight over you and me, God's joy that God comes near to us. Uh, and, and so that becomes contagious, and it, it sets off this chain reaction, I think, I hope, uh, of, of joy. And so... Uh, I love that in this time we can receive God's joy over us and we can take joy in, in the ways that we see God active in one another, just like Mary and Elizabeth did. Um, one of my favorite early, uh, early church names for Mary was uh, Theotokos, the, uh, the God-bearer. And we can see how others are bearing God um, to us uh, in, in the midst of our community. And so I, I pray that that's what you experience as we join at this table together. Will you pray with me? God, you are good, and uh, you delight in us, and it is our delight then to reflect that back to you. And so we come in joy uh, because of your joy first. God, we thank you. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the very breath of life. You set us free to be fully who we are. You made covenant with us, and you spoke to us by your prophets. You keep speaking. You keep speaking and, and helping us to look to the joy of a day when Justice would roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream and nation would not lift up sword against nation and we would not learn war anymore that you might teach us joy. God, we thank you for sending your son in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations, to include everyone. God, we thank you for Mary's word that it's already happening, it's already true that while you put the mighty down from their thrones in this great reversal, you exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things. The rich you send empty away. Help us to find joy where you find joy in that. Help us to find the joy of your son, Emmanuel, God with us, among us. He gave himself to the end as he sat at the table with his friends, taking joy in the simplicity of a meal, taking joy in being with folks even as he was preparing to say goodbye. And the night Jesus gave himself up for us, 
He took bread and broke it and shared it with his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body and it's given for you. Do this and remember me. And in the same way, I believe in joy. Jesus took a cup and raised it in a blessing and shared it with his friends and said, drink of this, all of you. This cup is my blood, a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and every time you drink it, remember me. And so God, we do, we come remembering. We come to receive your joy and pass it on among each other. We thank you for your joy over us and your Holy Spirit in us. So once again, God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts, bread and cup. What gifts? Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we would be for the world the body and body of Christ redeemed by his blood. God, continue to unite us in your joy and your delight. Make us one with Christ, one with one another, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet in joy forever. It's through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church that all honor belongs to you, God. And so it's our joy to be your people, to come to your table and to pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's a joy uh, that uh, God has welcomed all of us by grace to this table. And so uh, it's a joy that I then get to extend the invitation, that we get to extend the invitation that this table is for you, that all are welcome here. God has grace for you here. All means all. And that's really important for us to say. As our servers come forward, uh, just know that there's nothing you can do to earn. That's grace. That's a gift. That's joy, God's joy over, over you and me, uh, that we get to come and just come with open hands and receive it as a gift and uh, dip the bread in the cup, or there'll be a gluten-free option um, there in the back. Uh, and so come, friends, and receive God's joy over you that we might pass it along uh, among each other. that me
Let's pray. Thank you again for this meal by which you have given enjoy and extend your delight over your table everywhere we go.
Amen. Cards from our, uh, our greeter. Take one of these and consider inviting somebody to worship on Christmas Eve. This is a way that I really want to make it as easy as possible for you to pray with one of these if you want bonus points. But, friends, I hope in this that comes through angelic announcements that turn on their heads, but I also true connection. May you find and every day. Amen.